Greetings, hello, welcome everyone, welcome to Dev Chatter. My name is Brendan, this channel here is Dev Chatter, and today we're going to write a little bit of code. So, uh, for anyone that is new here, uh, feel free to settle in, uh, get your keyboard out, you can follow along, you can take a look at the code we're building, you can ask us questions. Uh, if you don't feel like chatting and you want to just sit there and be ignored the whole time, uh, that is totally cool too, just don't say anything in the chat and uh, everyone will... Uh, you know, leave, leave you be. Uh, if you are someone watching this in the future, say a recording on YouTube, hello future person, hopefully everything is wonderful there. Uh, for those of you that don't know, all of our streams are recorded. You can find the recent recordings in the video section here on Twitch, and if you want to see our archive of past videos, you can find all of those out on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash c slash devchatter. Um... If you are uh, someone that wants to chat with us outside of the stream, and uh, not just chat with us live, you are welcome to join our Discord, which I have linked in the chat, and it's also linked down below. Uh, if you don't know what Discord is, it's a chat application uh, that's commonly used by gamers and Twitch streamers, also used by a lot of community projects and things like that, so feel free to check it out. It's a wonderful community that we've got here, so... Uh, let's see, um... First off, I want to make sure that I say hello to everyone that said hi in chat. Uh, so, Mr. Shoji and uh, Wheatlaw, hello, hello. Yes, it is Saturday indeed. Welcome. Uh, I know we're going to have people getting settled in as we go here. Uh, I also want to apologize about the audio uh, during this stream. It's not going to be as great because uh, the temperature right now is just ridiculous where I am. So, uh, I will have an AC unit running through the whole stream. Uh, so if you can hear that in the background, I apologize about that. Not much I can do about it, because I don't want to turn it off today, because it is crazy warm. Anyway, uh, so, quick intro about the stuff that we're building here on stream. Um, Wheatlaw, do you use Celsius or Fahrenheit? Um... So, like, our feels like temperature, uh, I'll use Fahrenheit then, since you're going with Kelvin. Uh, it's supposed to feel like it's like 110 degrees or something like that, which is not, not a fun temperature to, you know, be in. Uh, which does mean that, a, uh, that, that at least where I am in the house, it's going to get a little bit warm. Uh, what with, like, lights and computer and everything like that. So if I turn that off, it'll get warm, and I don't want to deal with that. Yes, 110 degrees Kelvin would be death. So, no, I am not in 110 degrees Kelvin. I am in 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, I am not going to bother with the conversion into Kelvin because that is a pain in the rear. Okay, so what are we building? That is the question. I'm going to go ahead and get this started. So we're going to debug our application here. And I will bring another application onto the screen. <coughs> so... First off, this is the another application. This is Final Fantasy VII. Uh, this one over here is the WPF.NET Core 3 application that we've been building. Uh, we call this one Interactive 7 uh, because it adds chat interaction to Final Fantasy VII. Uh, very likely, if we build the same kind of thing for Final Fantasy VIII, it might be Interactive 8. I know it's incredibly creative. Very, very... Uh, you know, complex naming scheme that we're using here. Uh, as you know, developers and naming things. Okay, so, uh, first off, uh, when I click that connect button, you'll notice that uh, the bot will have said uh, Interactive 7 is live in the chat there, and that does mean that chat now has control over the, um, the uh, UI of this. Uh, so, we can do some fun things like this. And when we do that, uh, like the menu color changes to the new scheme that we requested. We could also say, hey, do a random one. Oh, whoops, sorry, Crimson, I killed yours. Uh, so we do random. Uh, we could also do uh, individual colors. Like this. And it will change to those individual colors, and you can see it change, and they kind of blend together, and it does this cool little effect. Uh, the, the neat part being that it gradually transitions to that color palette from whatever we had before. So, uh, make sure you do four colors, I am, uh, I am Rook. 
Uh, so yeah, so sure, yes, that's absolutely a sunset. Uh, although I might shift exactly where the colors are, but yeah. So you can control this. Now here is the neat thing. Now this is not going to work right because I was in the middle of some uh, a couple of things. Uh, so it's not going to work. But uh, Mr. Shoji, who I think is still in chat, uh, there you go, uh, has been working on a similar application, which I'm going to pull this up. This is not his application. This is uh, where I uh, am suggesting that we put his application. So this status page right here, which came up blank for some reason, that's kind of funny. Uh, hey, Mr. Shoji. Um, currently has some wonkiness in it because uh, I am doing some stuff with it. So this page was supposed to display some stuff, clearly didn't. It throws a bunch of exceptions for various reasons. Because, uh, as I said, I'm in the middle of doing some things. So it does not like the way that I defined this style. Unexpected identifier. Um, invalid expression. Okay, so it doesn't like that I did those. Probably because it doesn't want me to do these in here. Anyway, the short answer for what that's supposed to do is this. Uh, let me go ahead and... Can I just back this out? Uh, yes, I can just undo my, my local changes and we will be back to normal. Okay, so this is back to the way it was when it was working and we'll get rid of these because we don't need them and I will show you what this looks like. So for anyone that doesn't know, this around me, all of this stuff that you can see on the screen, um, so obviously I'm, I'm pulling in, so the thing, the main thing behind me is just like what's displayed on my monitor right there, right? So that's, that's all of that. But this thing here is just text that's placed there. And if, if you trigger something that causes an alert on screen, it will, um, you know, pop up. And, and so what you might not realize when you're watching a stream is there's actually a browser window that is occupying the screen. And it's just, what it does is it makes the background transparent. So it does not display the background. This is essentially how the browser that runs in my streaming software works. It doesn't display the background, but anything you put in the foreground, anything you put in front of, the window background is going to display. So that's how uh, we end up with things like, um, you know, our various animations and stuff that you'll watch on, on, on streams that pop up on the screen. So when we do that here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so someone can put a browser window onto the screen and we're actually running that in our WPF um, application. So we actually put an ASP.NET site in there, and that's where we're going to take uh, essentially the application Mr. Shoji is building, and we're just going to put it in our app instead. And we're going to shift it so that they share all the resources for talking to the game so that we're not doing that twice. Because if we have them separate, what's going to happen is uh, anyone that wants to use these two applications together would have two separate processes running and, and pinging their game and messing with all the content. Whereas if we do it this way, we can make sure that we both leverage the things, uh, we can leverage where one application has information that would be useful to the other, uh, and we could also make sure that they don't, you know, both try and get the same data at the same time and things like that. So the way that uh, the application that uh, Mr. Shoji is building is called Seng, um, which is named after a character in the game, and when that is running, what happens is Every second, it just checks the game and it just says, hey, what's the current state of things? What's the current state of things? What's the current state of things? So that it can update a display that a streamer would put on their screen and can show the current status of the party and everything else like that in the game. What that means is that uh, when we did our slow blending through the colors, is it's going to look choppy because um, it's going to pull once every second, which means it's going to skip 10 steps of color. Uh, so we can achieve the same effect by telling Seng either, hey, we're going to this color and it can blend its way there itself, or we can just give it every color change that we make. Now, right now, I wrote it as every color change we do that. Um, I'm Rook. Uh, am I using a path gradient brush for the menu interface? No. Uh, so, um, well, yeah, um, <laughs> yes, yes and no. 
Okay, so I am Rook. You are correct. Um, I am using that, but not where you think I am. Uh, and, and I will explain. Let's go ahead and run the application again, and, and I, will, I will answer that question. Uh, and that will also make the menu rainbow work. Uh, although it's not called menu rainbow, it's just called rainbow. Uh, now hopefully I uh, did get that other one running. So we're going to go ahead and connect this. Uh, so I am Rook. The, uh, the question that you're wondering about, this display right here is using a path gradient brush. So this one is using it. The preview in this application. But it's not being used everywhere. Hey, Cyrilash, welcome. Greetings. Okay, so we have this going. And then where is the last one? Right here. So let's refresh this page. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to close this because it's... So it's rotating around stuff. I don't have any of the images in mind because I don't really have Seng on here. Uh, all I did was a approximate Seng here, so I just grabbed, you know, the basic display of it, and I don't have any images, so you'll see broken images, but don't worry about that. Other than that, this is using the same styles, uh, so it's it's the same basic concept. So it's going to rotate around, and this is what someone would have along the side of their screen while they're playing the game. So it cycles through showing party stats and things like that. Now this is just the placeholder stuff. This isn't really my characters. You'll notice it won't match, uh, because I'm not really running Seng here. Uh, and then, let's watch this. So, um, there we go. So, that color, this color, and this color should all change when we use our chat commands. So, if I go uh, menu default, you'll see both the game and Seng are slowly transitioning, and that's the cool part. Uh, I can transition it to this one, and you can watch as they do a slow transition, or... I could even do this and trigger rainbow mode and you'll watch as they both cycle through various colors. So the neat thing is, what that means is anyone that streams this game and wants to put this display right above my head, that one there, on their screen, they can actually show information about what's in the game while they're playing it and it will always match whatever the menu color is that chat has requested. So that's the like, whoa, like really cool thing here is that chat does get like just control uh, of stuff the whole time it's on screen. So it's really neat. So because we've given them control both of just, you know, display elements from the stream and the game. So really, really cool. And you can just watch as it transitions. Now, I will point out that all three of these use different um, mechanisms for determining what they display. Uh, I never bothered uh, having rainbow mode display correctly inside of Interactive 7 uh, because the, the calculation of that one, so WPF is not as good, uh, at least if you're just using its standard brush controls, at drawing this. So if I tried rainbow mode in that, uh, WPF would probably kill me. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I didn't do it. Uh, if we wanted to do that, we'd actually have to write, like, I, I think our own code that really did this blending, or see if we could find a way to, like, rip it out of uh, Final Fantasy VII. Um, there might be a way to just, like, pull the actual data or something of the... I don't know. It'd be something to dig into that we might be able to do at some point, but I don't really feel like it. So... Uh, Dane, yeah, no uh, no problem. And uh, keep in mind that we actually do have uh, videos from when we've worked on this in the past. So if you do want to see previous episodes where we have worked on this, uh, we do have a YouTube channel that has uh, other videos um, of these. So you can see that information there. Let me show you, you should hack it by using an empty Seng browser window as the preview. Um, yeah, Mr. Shoji, I could totally do that now that I think about it. Uh, we have not made the empty Seng browser window yet, but um, I'll probably do that. That'll, that'll be a nice way to do it because we can put a browser source in there because the CSS is way better for doing this blending than, than WPF is. Um, but yes, no, I, uh, we will probably do that. Because the other thing that I want to do... So, notice in Seng that... Um, that Mr. Shoji defined these two little browser window, these two little like game menu windows here in the browser, and there's one that shows like your location, your gill, and the and the current time in game, uh, and then one that shows the party status. So works great. Um, what I want to do also is make it so that you can just go to a page and uh, define a browser, essentially define one of these menus, and you can put it anywhere. So. 
Uh, on my stream, you've probably noticed there's this description box. If someone had one of those, they might want this style on that as well, and they can do that. Um, so it's totally up to them how many of those things they want. So you could stuff this menu thing on the side and then have your other uh, screen elements also have the same background color. So very, very good trick. <laughs> I love how it's still going. Like, Rainbow's still going. Is it? Is it done yet? Okay, that might be where it stopped. Yeah, it's done now. <laughs> Rainbow goes for a while. Okay. So, we also build a whole bunch of other integrations into the game. It's not just menu colors. It's also character names, um, statuses, equipment. All that stuff can be affected by uh, chat. So, chat has full control of that. Uh, and all of the available options and everything, we have settings for all of these so that you can define what the commands are, uh, which features are turned on, what costs are associated with them, uh, including all the things for every various status effect that you could apply. Uh, and we technically also have all of these settings available for all of the items that you might want to use, items and equipment for all the characters in the game. Uh, and then we also built in some really, really evil features like this one. Uh, so if you watch our game right here, the, I just ran the popper command. Uh, you'll, you might notice in chat that uh, the bot just responded and said that all weapons, armor, uh, all weapons and armor have been set to the default. All items, accessories, materia, and gill have been removed. Good luck. So we're down to two gill. Uh, we no longer have any items. Uh, our characters are all set to their defaults. They don't have any any special anything. So it's basically like a <laughs> we took away all of your stuff mode, and it's really evil. Uh, but hey, it's kind of a cool feature. So if you really want a challenge, you can you know enable features like that. And uh, we just make them really, really expensive to turn on. Uh, so that's the short answer. Uh, okay. Um, so I wanted to make this work. Now, there, I have it working kind of right now, but I ran into a slight problem that I don't feel like digging into on stream. Uh, Cyrilash, no, it's not going to reset character level because that would just make it basically impossible it'd just become a grind fest and that doesn't sound fun uh, so the the idea with this is they could get new items and equipment without tons of grinding because uh, you know you can uh, I might adjust um, you know like frequency of use or something like that also uh, and the cost is very high so there, there's things like that okay so a couple of things so we need to wire up some changes to our application uh, in order to essentially bring Seng in as well. Now we have a couple of ways of doing this. So when I was talking to Mr. Shoji, we were discussing whether or not um, it makes sense to bring that in as a sub-project or to actually just merge the projects. Now my initial stance on that one is... Um, if we really want to bring them in and actually have them, you know, work together and run in the same process, I think it makes the most sense to actually tie them together. Because if we want to keep them separate, what we end up having to do is make a whole bunch of little libraries. So we would have to create like a hand, like two or three NuGet packages that they would both depend on in order to make that work as um, sub repositories. Not to say we couldn't do that, because we can. Uh, I know that uh, Mr. Shoji built a second library called Elena that we're going to be able to do some awesome, awesome things with. Uh, the reason that we suggested that, now this is something that I do want to get out there for anyone that is wondering about um, like modifying games and things like that. There's one important thing that you need to remember. If you're making any um, additional software to tie into a game or to work with a game, rule number one never ever ever distribute any assets that belong to the game because you do not own the rights to them so what that means is um, if you're going to modify a game you can change the text uh, in in the story however you want you can uh, and essentially your mod then has to change the text but your mod should not include their original text. You should just modify what you're trying to change. 
Uh, in addition, so let me let me show you what I mean. So right here, you'll notice I have broken images. And the reason I have broken images in this is because I do not have the game's images. Because I do not want Interactive 7 to distribute them. What that means is that we need to pull this data for the images for the characters as they appear in the game. So these images here, if we want to display them, we need to pull them from the actual game that's installed on the person's computer. So if, if someone downloads Interactive 7 and uses it, Interactive 7 itself will not include that data. It is going to pull it from the game. So that means on their computer, it will display the data from their game because they already have it. That's their copy. They paid for it. It's, you know, like they're just redisplaying data that's already on their computer that they paid for. We are not distributing that data. So that's that's the key. So um, I, the the that's not to say that you can't still get a cease and desist or something like that uh, by a company that doesn't want you doing that, but they're much more likely to do it if you really are distributing any of their assets for any reason. So, um, so Crimson has a fantastic question. Let's talk about that. Um, which, in order to do that, I'm actually going to bring up the uh, Mr. Shoji's other application that we're doing. So, um, we are going to integrate his other repository, and that is this one. Uh, so, this is uh, essentially how we're going to get that data. Yeah, so the funny thing was, I commented to Mr. Shoji about this, I'm like, you probably shouldn't be distributing those images, we need to pull that from the game, and he's like, you know, I bet I could pull it from the kernel, and uh, <laughs> then... What happens when you tell a, a, a nerd, hey, like, you, you know, they're like, you know, I bet I could do that. So he just goes and he's like, well, let's see if we can pull it. So uh, he went to dig this out of the game's kernel bin uh, and, and grab that data. Uh, did you, Mr. Shoji, did you ever um, uh, use the, did you ever take the chains I suggested uh, in Elena where I uh, mentioned how to find the, the location of the files using the running process? Um, I don't remember if you did or not. Anyway. Um, so inside of this application, uh, he should have a, yeah, so he's got some code designed to, uh, essentially read the kernel data and get it back for us. So, uh, ah, so pulling things like the weapon names, the weapon descriptions, the weapon data, somewhere in here should be the character portraits. Uh, character, no, uh, image, no. Maybe we don't have those yet. I don't know. I haven't asked about it, but that pulls out all the all the weapon data, which to be to be fair, that is actually one of the things. Um, oh, you were already looking into it. Oh, good. Because uh, the funny thing was, I saw it. I was like, I was looking at, at your program, and I was like, you have the images here. That's really dangerous. Uh, so the other thing that we do want to do with this is um, file paths in Elena are just a runner project for debugging the library expects you to hand it the path oh okay yeah and uh we can pull the path based on the process so that works fine um so here's the challenge so we were gonna have to do this kind of a thing anyway and so was mr shoji for saying uh, because of the fact that we should not be including the names now let me tell you what i mean uh so Inside of the application, so uh, he used JSON data. I just put it like directly into the data. Both work because um, it's really just how you want to handle it. I tossed it in here because I was planning on throwing it out uh, as soon as we could pull it another way. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to go into that one. I meant to go into this one. Uh, so the challenge is for a thing like Potion, uh, we're not going to run into any any legal issues. Potion's just a word. Uh, you know, potions exist in all kinds of games. Uh, and some of the other ones as well would be fine. Uh, Echo Screen, for example, that feels like it's more, like, game-specific. So they might claim that, you know, like, copyright kinds of things on some of these names. So wherever there's something that, you know, any name that, that could be considered to be theirs. So, like, all of these greens, for example, those 
probably they can claim you know that's their content so we want to avoid that so the way that we need to get around that for for modifying this game is we need to pull the data from the game and display it so we're not like our program doesn't include any of that data we're just pulling from whatever the game is so that comes with an added benefit when someone else makes a modification to this game so if i want to run with someone else's mod that changes up the game does something different we'll be pulling the data from that as well so we can pull any data that they happen to use so we don't have to worry about that uh hey jen's duck welcome program's not running so it won't change right now but yes that would be a good color palette uh Mr. shoji uh when seng calls elena it uses similar code to get that path okay cool yes because that is exactly how we want to pull it okay um yes so a couple of changes we need to make in order to wire these together a little bit better actually i should have left that up if i didn't it's right here okay cool um so sang so this is sang so sang is the little status it's the status display yeah see uh live status display uh for people that are streaming final fantasy 7. so you run it and uh, you run Seng, but instead of having Seng just be this, we're gonna have Seng be built in, like be in ours as well. So we're gonna tie these two together and it'll be a WPF app, .NET Core 3, that runs both the ASP.NET front end, that's gonna be the Seng front end, and Interactive 7, which is the interaction with chat. So uh, by tying those together, we, we can then give much cooler experiences. Uh, so, let's... You don't have any branches doing something weird, do you? Nope. Adding a license is not something uh, that really uh, definitely needs to come in here. Um, changes yesterday. I wonder what you changed yesterday. Uh, so, Seng is also a C-sharp .NET project, so very similar. And I believe... Uh, that in your controllers, home control, I think you just have data. Yeah, you just have this that just pulls all the data that we're displaying. So um, my thoughts on this one, let's do an API controller that does pass back the data. In addition, I think it would make sense to also be wired into SignalR so we can receive individual updates. So SignalR will give us individual updates and we'll uh, have an endpoint that can request all of the data. Um, I think along these lines we want to request two different types of data. Um, there's the more volatile data and there is the less volatile data. So uh, if we look again, do we have the program still open? Yes. The hit points of the character and things like that, um, we probably want to be checking that on a relatively frequent basis. Uh, but I would not think that we would need to check uh, the equipment and material as often. So if you change an item on your character uh, and, you know, we don't update it for five seconds, ten seconds, I don't think that that'll be a huge problem for people uh, because I don't think that those are going to change at such a rapid pace that it'll matter. Uh, things like character names, uh, for example. Um, once a character name is set, I don't think we need, like... You know, we just need to know when a carrot when the party members change, and that's really the only thing that happens there. Uh, so, party change again is something that I don't think needs to get requested frequently. However, if Interactive Seven changes the data, we could change that immediately and and update it, and we don't even have to wait for the check because we know it happened for those. Um, oh yeah, uh, Mr. Shoji, you can probably just delete that branch then. Okay, so how do we want to, uh, so I want to pull more of this in and actually make it so that they wire up basically the same way. Uh, so let's pull a local copy of Seng and we can try wiring them together and then we can see where we can overlap and share things. So... Um, we're in a branch right now that I call, yep, not that one, that I call this program, that I called Web Overlay. So this is our Web Overlay branch. Uh, so I pulled in the basics of that so that we could just see, hey, does this work at all? And it does, which is cool. 
Um, let's remove unused uh, CSS. So we don't need that CSS, goodbye. Uh, we, we now bind that, so undo that. Is, this, uh, is that just that? Yes, it is, okay. <laughs> just wanted to check, so that's removing the unused CSS. So, cool. Uh, hang on. I'm gonna go ahead and push, then I'm gonna switch branches to see if I can pull in a, uh, a copy of Seng. Uh, which actually, now that I think about it, I think I forked already. Yep, I did, so let's jump over to mine and... Um, yee, do I pull your stuff or do I just nuke it and pull again? I could go either way. I have not done anything with mine, so I might nuke it and get rid of it. Um, I pulled it here too, so actually, uh, let's delete it. So this is Benrick Singh. Yep, I understand. Goodbye. Oh, it's gonna make me do this. Okay. That's annoying. Uh, of course it's going to make me do that. That makes sense. Why wouldn't it? <sighs> okay, Seng was successfully deleted. So, Shoji, Seng, Let's grab a fork uh, over onto, oh, you might wanna see this. So uh, if you've never forked anything on GitHub, here's all you do, you click on fork. Uh, if you're in multiple organizations, you can choose which one you wanna take it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it over to the Dev Chatter organization. And we'll have a copy of this over on Dev Chatter. Uh, James, uh, have you worked with WPF in a professional capacity? Yes, so James, I actually used to a long time ago do WPF applications. Uh, I've, so I've shipped professionally WPF and, uh, you're gonna laugh at this when I've shipped Silverlight applications before, uh, back when Silverlight was, you know, a thing, uh, and hilariously it actually, you know, for some things back in, in, in the day was a better solution because, well, HTML5 wasn't there yet. Uh, so we built some things in Silverlight and if, uh, you were building it for a business and you knew that they were going to have it, then it was actually a very good solution for that. So... Yep, good stuff. Okay, so we now have a copy of this, so I am going to jump over into my, um, whatever this thing is called, GitHub desktop application and download a copy of this. So, and I'm gonna put it in my uh, on stream folder. Because I have a folder of code repositories that we work on on the stream. So, uh, so we now have a local copy of Seng right here. This should have uh, uh, Mr. Shoji's commits from uh, a day ago. And I will point out, so Mr. Shoji actually accesses the data very differently from how we do. Uh, his memory locations that he does is very, are very different. So uh, we both did it in some similar ways. Uh, but they're not exactly the same. So within our application, what we did was we said, hey, uh, we're going to keep track of character data as a, as a separate structure, for example. So we said, okay, we'll, we'll have a block of data. This is the character data. And um, we said, what are the offsets within a character data? And then what's the starting point of each character? And we just said, here's the start of Cloud's data. Here's the start of Barrett's data, Tifa's data, etc., etc., etc." and just put in here's the starting memory point, here's the offsets to get to anything else. Now, because our application only writes data and it only writes one thing at a time, we actually access the specific spot only. So we just go in and we pinpoint and we say like, yep, that's the line of memory we wanna change, change it. And so that's, that's how our application works. Now, because Sang is pulling blocks of data to display updates, it pulls everything. So if we look at how it works, uh, let me open up. Uh, let me open up the project in uh, in a Visual Studio. Uh, oh, you changed you changed how yours works. Okay, well either way, um, it doesn't make a it doesn't make a huge difference. Um, 
the uh, the point being that uh, it used to pull uh, large chunks of data and um, it used this thing called a it, it's the save uh, like FF7 save map for example I know that you used yes it reads much larger groups than ours does so uh, where ours does much smaller pieces because uh, we're literally changing like you know three bytes at a time <laughs> so we're like just change these three bytes. The biggest single change that uh, um, Interactive 7 does is uh, when we're changing the menu colors because that is uh, it's we change 16 bytes at a time to do that or 12 bytes at a time depending on where in memory you're writing uh, which Mr. Shoji probably doesn't even know that that's a thing because Seng doesn't care. Seng only has to pull from a certain location uh, there's actually a memory location we have to care about that that uh, Mr. Shoji doesn't, uh, because there's actually um, I so based on the code that I've seen that is in Mr. Shoji's, I know where he's pulling the the uh, menu colors from, and it's not actually the same spot that we always have to write to. Uh, funny enough, because there's actually two places we have to write the the color to. Um, there are two locations for window color. Yes. One of them used for saving and one of them used for display. Yep, exactly. Yep. Okay, so you do know that there's the two separate ones. I know that you pull the display one uh, because you should pull the display one. That's the one getting displayed. So you do want to pull that one. Um, but since you're not writing it, you don't have to write to the saved one like we do. So the, the funny thing that, that, um, that we actually do, and here, here's a little secret um, that's, that's kind of neat that uh, Mr. Shoji would get, is uh, so when we're actually writing our menu colors, so when we do rainbow mode, uh, I, will disp I will show everybody that um, because we're talking about it. Uh, when I change those colors in here, yeah, exactly. Uh, that, is, that is correct, Mr. Shoji. Um, you pulled from the one person testing and it only updated on save. Yeah, so it's kind of weird actually. Um, there, so there's actually, I think, four locations where the menu colors are stored. <laughs> Not just two. One is used to overwrite the save file and one is used for display. And, that, and then the other two are used for um, the color values that are shown in the... Here, let me show you. Uh, one is used to display this little box that the hand is pointed at here, this box. One is used for that, that is a separate set of colors. And then the other one is, is these. So it's what these values are live when you're changing them. So those are actually all separate and you can find that when you di really dig into the memory. Okay, here's the thing that I wanted to show you all. Let me make sure this is connected. <coughs> Excuse me. If I go back to menu default, notice it transitions slowly. So the way that we're doing this is I'm updating the display value a ton of times in order to make it blend like this. So I'm just slowly updating the values it uses to display and it shifts us from color to color. But when I get to the last color, that's when we update the one for the save. So what that means is that um, I'm not overwriting the save value every time because I don't need to. I, I just need to overwrite that one time because uh, it would be pointless to overwrite that repeatedly. People are not saving the game while they're doing a menu color transition. Um, so why, w why would we do that? Okay. Uh, thank you, Miha. Very nice. That was a good color. Okay, let's jump back into this. So, this is, oh good, you pull, you, you, you actually put them in already. So I, I also have all this data for all the various uh, Chocobo stats, so uh, I assume you're planning on displaying it. Uh, we're not planning on displaying it, we are actually going to be uh, using it to allow people to rename the uh, Chocobos. Uh, 
Yeah, I also have a, uh, a, a whole thing of, of various memory locations. Ah, so you have beginnings of the characters as well. Yep. So these are all the places within memory that all this stuff is stored. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of these. So essentially the idea is we both have all of this data. It seems silly to keep it, like to have two separate copies of it because we can just combine our, our maps of all the data into one thing. Uh, so that is accessing, so that's, yeah, that is accessing the game data. This is addresses. Yep. That's all the offsets for those. This should be... Yep, there's all the Chocobo ones. And this is the character offsets. So, uh, we also use all the character offsets in ours for various stuff. <laughs> yep, so the, the funny part being we want to combine these. All right, so how do we want to do that? What do you have in the dub 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 root? Anything? You pulled in a copy of view. Uh, this is your custom JS. You don't have anything in there. Okay, good. That's just Axios. Uh, so we can for now access those based on a CDN. That's just jQuery, which we're not using. This is all the character. This is the image uh, images for all the stuff that we don't want to. That we do not want to include. Okay, so there's nothing really in, in www root that we need to pull. Uh, oh, hang on, what are the styles? Um, I think we pulled these already. Um, they may have changed, so we could technically pull them again if we want to. Uh, but here's here's what we want, here's what I want to do. Um, I want to uh, suggest that we try and just merge these together. Uh, so let's start here. So, and we'll take a look. We're in a branch of ours, so if we need to throw this away, we can. Uh, so, step one. Let's add a controller. Uh, we'll call it Seng for now. Uh, so, well, actually, I created a status controller, so we'll just leave it as that. We'll, we can call it Seng if we want. Uh, oh, right, it's down here. Derp. I was like, it's in the main application. Yeah, but it's a separate project. Okay, so... Status controller, which we can rename to Seng if we want. Is there anything in the Seng controller? No, it's just basic display the view. And the data, I'm going to put that on an API call. So it'd be a separate controller. So let's call this. Um, and, you know, let's just copy this controller for it. Um, So we'll do that, and then give it its own file. So we'll call this, um, so that's the uh, status, that's that status controller. This is the, um, well, we'll call it, I guess we'll call it the Seng uh, data controller. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shoji, we can pull them again though, so it doesn't really matter. How do you intend to handle sharing code when there are two independent Git projects? Uh, Simon, so instead of doing that, uh, I, my, my suggestion is that we'll just, um, like, we'll, we'll make mine public and we'll both just work on this one then, instead of uh, maintaining two separate ones. So we'll make Seng be, like, in Interactive 7, and we'll connect over to Elena, and whether or not the name stays as Interactive 7, uh, I don't know. There have been suggestions for other names, uh, which we might consider, uh, but that's something that we should talk about. So... Uh, I need to make sure that that uh, Resharper knows uh, that that is a name. So Seng is going to be in the team shared uh, names, and this will be an action result of type uh, game status. Which actually I could just make it, you know, return back game status really if we wanted to. Uh, welcome, uh, Kyrell Dixon. I'm guessing. Uh, I don't, I don't think I butchered that one. I think I got that right. I was, if I did, let me know and I will try to say it better next time. But, uh, welcome. Thanks for following. Much appreciated. Okay, so we're going to have that. For now, let's just do return null. 
Uh, game status is not a thing, but that's fine. Uh, so API slash controller, so this will be Seng data, I guess. Um, and we can have it be separate pieces if we want. Um, we can talk about how that one goes. Uh, you'll probably end up renaming that to party controller or similar later. Later. Um, it's a good call. Uh, let's just name it party controller now then. Because um, if we change the status controller to be the Seng controller, then that would also work pretty well. So party controller, it renamed that. So games... Uh, so here's the next thing that I want to do. Let's find out where this was. So game status uh, is this structure. Where is it in the code? Okay, so it's in a models uh, folder. So let's do this for now. Uh, I'm going to jump over to ours. I'm going to make a folder of Seng stuff. Uh, we'll start integrating it, but for now, so that we don't have namespace collisions, let's make a folder of all the Seng stuff, just so that we don't run into a problem, and then we can slowly work on bringing them together. So let's grab all of these models. Um, opponents, chocobos, and a different blob data. Yes, yes, Mr. Shoji, I, I agree. Um, because uh, I, I totally agree because we're going to want to pull things at different rates. Because uh, some things we're not going to want to pull like every second. Because chocobo data is not going to be so important that we're going to need to update it every second. <laughs> for example. Like, uh, and, and something that we could do is, uh, for example... Um, I want to. I'm thinking that we change the timings of how data gets sent to the program, and in fact, these might change to hubs instead of being API endpoints. Also, uh, the reason being that um, as a hub, we can we can send the data, so we could be checking to see on the server and you know changing the timing. So we could say like, oh, we're in combat now. Okay, we need to more frequently update uh, character health until we see that we're no longer in combat and then we don't need to check you know the character's you know status as frequently so it's kind of what my thinking is on that okay so let's go grab the models so i'm going to open that in explorer and just take the whole folder over because i think that'll be a little bit easier uh, than trying to transfer it through visual studio right now uh, so whoops let's open up sing uh, the same folder here, add a models folder for now. So here's the same models folder. Um, uh, hang on, Simon, what do you, uh, what's Simon, what's the general edit kit on this? Yeah, so normally if you'd fork a repository, you're doing that to send back changes to the 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 base uh, library. I just did this in case we needed to do something. I figured, hey, let's fork this one. But I could have just cloned uh, Mr. Shoji's for what we're doing. Um, yes, exactly. We're it, yeah. So Mr. Shoji's wanted like because the plan is to actually just merge this and be done with it. Like I think this is the the basically the only way to do it. Um, Uh, yeah, so Mr. Shoji is correct. So if you are forking it, you are responsible for making sure that you have all the changes that the uh, that the the original branch had, uh, and that you can send them back. Uh, so that is absolutely it, it is totally on you to do that. Uh, okay, so this should compile now, and we need to figure out where we want to pull this. So in the current version of Seng, the model was pulling it off of program. Now, we're running as a WPF app, so we don't have program, but likely, I'm thinking, we want to have a party status model that we're just going to uh, be using the whole time. So, my thought on that one is this. So, in order to make that sort of work, uh, I'm going to wire up the next piece that we're going to need, which is to um, have a... Uh, where, you know, where would that be, actually, now that I think about it? in here uh, so let's make this let's make a new class that we're gonna call the um, actually hang on 
I just realized, um, game status. Is this a view model? This feels like a view model. I don't know what people in chat are thinking on this, but I, I feel like this is a view model. If people agree, then, uh, because it feels like uh, this is a, a view model that would that we'd bind changes to, uh, if anything, a DTO, because uh, we're sending this down. So, uh, but I think I'm going to use the term view model despite this being a uh, a DTO. Yeah, uh, game status is the party status, and it's probably a view model. I'm a, we're we're 100 right here. So I'm thinking that that I'm going to change this name to be. So I'm, first off, we're going to move it. Let's move it first. Uh, into the view model folder. So this will be the first thing to hop out of the Seng models and go over here and, and they'll merge together then. Uh, and this becomes party status view model, I think. Party status, uh, whoops, par party status view model. Um, we are doing full name view model, but um, if you have a strong opinion on it, I am fine with changing that to like VM. Um, so let's put that there, and it's going to be accessing a bunch of Seng models still, which is good, and some of those might end up being view models as well. Um, okay, so since we have an application that's sort of sticking around, um, uh, it's intended to go outbound, but also what it's updating internally, I tend to go full name too. Okay, good, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, uh, so you intend to merge the code such that there's one code base with the functional capabilities of both application uh, with the attention of PR back to the forked repo so you can both collaborate on one combined solution. Uh, not exactly, uh, Simon. Uh, that's very close. Uh, I think we're actually going to put it in this one, so I didn't really need to fork. Um, uh, forked repo so you can both collaborate on the one combined solution in the two Git projects since both benefit from the sharing of code. Yes. So the idea is that we're both going to be, uh, most of the models folder are tied to that same base view model. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that we're going to shift almost all of these over, but I just wanted to pull it in in one spot so we didn't hit any initial conflicts. Um, uh, okay, so we have this. Um, so in Interactive 7, we have an IOC container that's wired up. So instead of pulling that from program, I want to, I want to suggest we do this and make the um, we'll make this the view model that we'll pull in here and then just return that view model so the application will maintain a single instance of this and we'll update the values of it as we go uh, so instead of being tied on to the program uh, class it will automatically just get shoved into the constructor when a request is made to the API so it will give it that reference and we can use that uh Mirko Rayner, uh welcome thanks for that follow if i just butchered your name tell me how to say it better and i will uh and thank you for that follow glad you're here okay so that will return back the view model uh sort of the way that we want right party status view model I love how it's telling us nothing's using this code. It's like, yeah, nothing's updating it. That's fine. Uh, we're just skeletoning it, creating the skeleton right here. Uh, so the only model it's using are the characters, and I'm assuming then that character is using all the rest of them. So character has weapon, armlet, accessory, materia, and I am good with those being uh, separate models for now. And these, I'm assuming, have the like effect ones on them. Uh, type. Yeah, uh, type on that one. Um, accessory, armlet, weapon, weapon type, uh, and status effect string. Is this just ah? Okay, so this is just checking them. Yeah. The the funny thing that I'm sure Mr. Shoji noticed when messing with our uh, status effect commands uh, in chat is that we do not support things like dual, for example. Uh, though we technically could, because uh, a mod could reuse these to make them work a little bit differently, uh, but we did not use all of them. Um, so, 
Uh, the string was for yes, uh, yeah, yeah. It makes sense because it's a view model. It's not a. It's not like a model in memory to do stuff with. It's it's designed to be displayed. So yes, no, I hundred percent. I hundred percent agree. That is absolutely how it should be done. Okay, so new threat uses dual. Yeah, that's why I feel like some mods might do it. Uh, we we did not build it with the with the necessity of of uh, working with the uh, the various mods. So okay, so let's do this first. So these are, uh, I'm just going to adjust these namespaces and get rid of the extra stuff on the top of them. Um, the unused uh, using statements and everything like that. Um, so one other thing that's a little bit uh, weird about the way that I build Interactive 7, uh, Mr. Shoji, that I should mention, um, I actually include .NET Core 3 in the packaged version of it. So no one actually has to have .NET or .NET Core installed in order to run the application. Uh, so we actually have it all bound together. Uh, yes, these are the default file templates. Um, they just included all of the... Uh, uh, namespaces uh, that are totally unneeded. Okay. Um, So this should build, I think, um, despite my moving them, and I think that updated so that these don't have the excess anymore. Character got theirs removed. Yeah, party controller. Okay, good. Um, all right, so that brings in all of those bits. Uh, so we have we have all of the various model objects. What is next? Um, what's lib? Uh, oh, native memory reader. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Something that I didn't do yet that I that I want to do, and I'm think that and your application could use as well. Um, I almost feel like separating out things that are like uh, that are really about the applications and things that are about uh, like Final Fantasy VII, the actual game. Uh, so. Uh, bundled runtime is fine, and you were looking into uh, moving to .NET Core anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, but sort of yes. Um, it it is it is essentially flags in how we publish. So uh, when when we actually go to publish it, there are basically flags that tell um, the the compiler. Uh, to include all the necessary .NET Core libraries. Now that does mean that the program is going to be slightly larger uh, as a result of that, but since we're not including like image data or anything like that, I really don't think anybody's going to care all that much. So, uh, oh, you're already on Core 2. Yeah, okay. Oh, you were looking to, to bundling the runtime. Yeah, okay. I knew before that you were on uh, .NET Full Framework in the past because you'd suggested that people install that in order to make it work, but yes. Um, bundling makes it so they don't have to. Um, wouldn't things about Final Fantasy VII be a separate domain model DLL? Uh, yes, ex exactly, Simon. Uh, creating a separate project file that was just stuff about Final Fantasy VII. Uh, and so, for example, like, um, the view model of party status that we were... Oh, um, hang on. Switch to this one. So, the view model party status here... Um, which still has a folder called game status, so I need to fix that. Um, so this is, you know, Interactive 7 and saying, like, this should be in, in, like, our specific stuff. Because this has an understanding of what we are displaying to the user, whereas these are data about the game itself and are not really, like, us specific. So that's why I was suggesting that like we maybe break that into a separate library. So the core of our stuff is here, uh, but then that could go to another library that we depended on. Um, it's a .NET Core console web app running on 4.6.2. Oh yeah, so it is full framework still. Yes, uh, so uh, yeah, so you're running ASP.NET Core on .NET Framework 4.6.2. Yeah, so uh, one big reason why we why we want to get away from that one is uh, 462 will be going the way of the dodo uh, because um, uh, Microsoft will be on uh, .NET 5 uh, is actually the next version. Uh, so and 
Despite the name seeming like one more than four, it's actually .NET Core 4 with a new name because they thought it would confuse people if they upgraded from .NET 4.6 to .NET 4 as an upgrade. So they went to 5 and just said, hey, yeah, it's an upgrade, even though it's from the core path. Uh, so we want to make sure that we get this over to core. Uh, the fact that you're working against the same game binaries kind of acts like a shared standard specs. Uh, yes, yeah, so Simon, so that's actually part of the reason uh, why Mr. Shoji's project Elena is so useful, is because that one is, uh, like, my, my thought is before we tie that too heavily into either of these, let's get them using the same thing, and then we can tie into to, to Elena together, uh, so that we don't create more separate things accessing the same content. So I want to make sure that we pull from Elena the same way, too. Because <laughs> it's one of those, like, it's just, like, the longer we wait to bring these together, the harder it's going to get to do it, is kind of my, my feel on that one. Yes, exactly, Simon. I am thrilled by the fact that they called it .NET 5, because .NET 4 would have confused everyone. And so it's like, there's a small amount of confusion over, wait, why is it 5? We, we're on 3 right now. And the, the answer is, it's like, well... That's so that the people that are on .NET 4, you know, that are on .NET Framework 4 don't get confused. And it's like, yes, exactly. So, .NET Core people skip a number, but it's better than .NET Framework people going back a number. So, <laughs> it's like, yep, this is the better solution, good job. Okay, um... And then we also lose the confusion of, wait, is it .NET Core, is it .NET Framework? It's like, no, 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 there's, a, like, there's only one now. There's only one. We're not maintaining both anymore. Okay, um, so anyway, we're not going to pull that just yet. So we're going to leave those alone. Uh, let's take a look at the other project. Uh, yes, exactly, Mr. Shoji. .NET Core 4 and Windows 9 are having a party together. Um... No, no one need worry about that. Uh, okay, so in the view, do you have anything weird in your view? Um, this, I'm assuming, will will connect these together better later. Uh, I think the only thing this is talking to is party status. So if I wire up party status, we should be fine again. Um, now, here's the question. is How much... Uh, You know, we do have an option, um, now that I think about it, that it bring these together in a simpler way. Let's temporarily have a Seng project in here. Um, and we'll get rid of it as soon as we can, then. So let's create a class uh, so that, you know, like, this will just give it a spot so I don't have to worry about collisions on things. Uh, we can just put this in here and then join them together to use the same thing. Um, so we'll call this saying for lack of, um, you know, a better name for now. And I will just pull all the saying stuff into here. Because I think then the namespaces and everything will line up and we won't have that yelling at us the whole time. So let me go open that in File Explorer. And then I'm going to open up the saying project and I'm going to do the same. And I'm just gonna pull. I'm just gonna pull files that are gonna be relevant. Now I am not gonna commit the um, the image file into there. Uh, so, because I do not want it to ever make its way into uh, this repository, so it will never have been in here. Which is one of the reasons why we are uh, going this direction instead of the other way. Uh, is because the Interactive 7 project has never included uh, the, like, the image files. I think they might be cool with us having had the, like, names of the weapons and items and things like that as long as they disappear, uh, but image data I think they might care more about. Uh, so I just want to avoid that concern there. Um, did you do anything in, in Startup that's weird? Uh, nope, nothing in startup that we care about. And how much stuff is in program? There, uh, I recall there being a significant amount. Yep, whole bunch of stuff in program. So we'll pull program as well. Um, these have anything? Nope. 
Uh, oh, that's funny. You actually are doing some stuff in here. Huh. Uh, and I don't think we need anything else. So that should be all of it. So this should be what we needed from Seng in order to basically have all of Seng over here. So, hang on, let me check chat again. Uh, okay. Um, can we throw whatever version number Windows, ME, and Vista should have been called into the same trash can? Hey, Simon. So everybody's all critical of Windows Vista. To, but to be fair, like, half of the features that people freaked out about in 7 and were like, Wow, these are so great! They were actually features from Vista. That was the thing that I always thought was funny. It's like, yeah, the big problem with Vista was that the... Uh, all the various driver companies didn't want to go have to redo it, so everybody that made graphics cards or printers or whatever were mad about the fact that uh, Microsoft released an OS that didn't follow the same path again. So, like, there was, you know, like they're like, wait, what do you mean you did a rewrite and we have to do this over again? So that was, that was the stupid part is, like, everybody loved 7. It was like, well, really, the great thing about 7 was that, like, the companies had come around and finally built all the drivers for Vista, and so they worked on 7. Look, that was really what it was. Uh, okay, so um, would it be easier to add existing project and just delete the crap after it copies? Uh, no, I'm done, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, load from re uh, remote resources is needed for it to be okay when the game is loaded on a VM or a separate disk or some 7 have a variants that run something akin to ff7 disk one. Oh, uh so the interesting thing about that is i was able to get mine to connect to that but we'll add it in just in case i guess maybe uh we'll find out if we if we need it again then uh i will have you like uh you know, test it on wherever you tested it that you ran into that and if we do end up needing it then yes we'll add it back in again uh because uh, i was testing mine with uh so it's run with with suna's uh stuff and and mine runs okay with that uh, which, uh, including his seventh heaven stuff, so maybe there's something that um, that that I'm missing there. Uh, that if you know about, then we'll add it in for that. Okay. Either way, so this is called program. Program is not what it's going to be called long run. Oh, um, crap! You're right. Hang on. Uh, I missed a thing. I missed one thing. Over here. I need to do this. Seng has some uh, some libraries it depends on. Specifically, this one. You know what? I'm going to pull this and delete the ones I don't need. Uh, if we need to add those back in, we can, but I don't think we're going to need to. And that's all www root stuff, so we can ignore that. Uh, this is not where we're building, so we don't need that either. And... Um, I should mention, um, Mr. Shoji, I am, I am good with us figuring out uh, logos, icons, stuff like that. I figured we would talk with uh, like the rest of the community to help us with that stuff. I figure they've got um, resources that, you know, people who think these are awesome projects and would be willing to help us with that. I don't know what your icon looks like. I didn't look at it. Uh, why don't I look at it? Is this the, no, that's your fave icon, which you don't use. Where is your... Ah, here's the Seng icon. Oh, it's Seng. That's funny. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> well, in that case, we have the easy answer that, of course, our fave icon will be Seng. Uh, that, that that makes sense. So that, that can become our fave icon, actually. Uh, so it'll appear on that. Uh, but we should do something then for, um, like, our, like, combined interaction stuff. Um, okay. I pulled that in, so we should have that. Um... Okay, uh, so, sounds good, Mr. Shoji. Uh, let's, let's build real fast and see what we get. So we have not referenced this project yet, which is fine, and I'm going to rename that from program to something else. Um, but I just wanted to pull it in for now, because uh, clearly it's not going to be a program with a main or anything like that. Uh, yeah, we don't need those. Um, ooh, Seng Models Accessories is not what it's called anymore. Um, but this is going to want a reference to core for now in order to get that data because that's where it's going to be coming from now because we've moved the models. Um, uh, 
uh, Seng model's accessory. Yep, there it is. Uh, which means that this one is going to be the same thing on weapon. So models is no longer there, which means we need to put that in. Let's build again and see what happens. Crossing our fingers. Oh, something failed. Okay, not surprising. This doesn't have a reference to game status because that's not really there anymore. It is called Party Status View Model. Hey, Party Status View Model, Party Status. Nice. Uh, so right now, a lot of what's in program is going to get shifted somewhere else because this is really just like the startup things. So we're going to want to pull it elsewhere. But for now, if we rename this, we can have our startup trigger this startup and, and it should run fine. Uh, the trick is we just need to make sure that program initialize using our dependency inversion, so our IOC container, and then they should almost immediately have shared resources. Um, okay. Um, uh, so you said use Kestrel and listen on any I IP. We should not need to do that because we're in .NET Core um, and we're already wired up to connect to that. Uh, so that is loading the data from Elena. Um, where's our other red down here? Uh, so this is start up the server. Uh, so I'm going to delete this. Developers, 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 developers. Hey, welcome developers, 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 developers. Uh, glad you're all here. Greetings and welcome! Hi! Uh, we need we need some channel defense here. What are we doing? Uh, quick! Uh, I... Sorry, I gotta, gotta, gotta send out some of these, uh, these Chattasauruses to defend us. Uh, greetings, Robert Tables and friends. Hello, the Michael Jolly. Uh, welcome, welcome, Coder. Uh, Robert Tables, hi. Hey, Copper Beardy. Glad to see you all here today. Uh, we are doing, uh, an interesting thing. So, uh... There's another person in chat here, Mr. Shoji. Uh, he and I both are working on similar applications that uh, talk to the same game in almost the same way. Uh, for those of you that might remember from our previous stuff, uh, did I get rid of all the compiler errors yet? Um, nope. We still have a few. Uh, so I am going to show you all what we're building today so that you can see that. Party status view model. And that is not models.character, that is, um, saying, uh, that is, uh, saying, uh, models character, uh, which one is it? Where's the, hang on. That's the one I need. There we go. Uh, so, stick around for a second, I will show you all exactly what it is we're building here on the stream today. Uh, I just need to click a couple of buttons, so we're, we're merging together two projects, so that's why we have so many compiler errors right now, is, uh, it is just trying to figure out what it is that we're actually doing, and as soon as it figures that out, uh, we'll be able to compile, build, and show you what it is we're doing. Uh, so for now, uh, just bear with me while we do this. So, there's no start server, uh, so... There we go. Greetings. Uh, hey, Daniel. Uh, long time no see. Uh, you've definitely been in here before. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. Let me go ahead and get this application started uh, so that we can show you what it does. So if you've ever played Final Fantasy VII, it looks kind of like this, although when you played it, it probably didn't look like that. Uh, probably when you played it, it looked a lot more like, um, well, this. It probably looked a lot more like this. So, this is what Final Fantasy probably looked like when you played it back in the 90s or the early 2000s, uh, if you were someone that played uh, JRPGs back in that time frame. If you were someone that liked to modify the colors of the uh, background, because the game did have this as an option, so you could go into the config menu and you could change up the menu color uh, to your heart's content. So you could, say, make that like this, and hey, they're changed. So this was built into the game back in the 90s. It was a cool little bit of customization, kind of fun. Uh, what we think is fun is 
if you can change those from Twitch chat. So this is what Interactive 7 does. So if you haven't seen us do this, uh, like it basically gives that control to chat and this is what they can do. Okay, so that's what we've been building here on the stream is a program that does this kind of stuff. There's a lot more interaction than we do than just the menu colors, but this is the one that looks neat. So, so clearly I'm gonna show you that when you show up. Uh, the other th program that we are working with is this one. This is called Sang. Now, it's not wired up correctly, uh, because I, I don't really have, it's not really here. Um, I, I pulled like some of its stuff to just show as an example. Uh, if I were to do this now, if you watch, you'll notice Seng's colors now match our colors. So see its little window over there? And I can switch it back to default colors. And what's uh, so what Seng did is it is actually like a status overlay display for a streamer. So the streamer can actually put that window that's above my head right there onto their stream and everybody can see the status while they play the game. Because if I'm not in the menu, I'm in this and you can't see the menu. But if this is on the side of the stream, you can see it. And so that essentially allows a streamer to be showing information to all the viewers while they play the game. So really, really awesome stuff. But since that application and our application do a lot of the same stuff, we kind of said, wouldn't it make more sense if we just like combine resources and put these together? So that's what we're doing today, is we are essentially pulling Seng's display into Interactive 7. Uh, we might rename something, but essentially we're combining the project. So uh, last week, I went and said, hey, can I get a an ASP.NET application running inside of my WPF application? So this is WPF app, so just standard, you know, .NET Core 3 WPF application. Uh, and it is actually what this uh, web app is running through. So these are the same program running at the same time right now. So it's really cool that we can do that. Um, so that's what we're doing. So we are now taking everything that Seng... So Seng used to run as a console application. So you'd start it up as a console application. It would spin up a web browser. Uh, and that's what a streamer would run. So if a streamer wanted to run both of these, they'd have to run the Seng uh, uh, console application and the Interactive 7 WPF application together. And so now we're going to say, you know what? If you actually just run one, we're just going to spin both up. You have both available. Use them. Awesome. And there's some other cool things that we can do because we can also give them... Uh, UI pieces, so we can put in our application, so we can put in our, our applications GUI uh, the information for how the streamer can include that on their stream. So in order to put that stuff inside of OBS and display it, they need to pull the uh, correct uh, commands. Okay, so this code came over in a program main. We don't need a second program main in here. We're a WPF app. We don't need the console app. So we're going to call this. Um, so let's change the name of the class, maybe like um, Seng Startup or something like that for now. Uh, Seng Startup. Uh, actually, maybe it's uh, maybe we just call it. Uh, you know what? Seng Program for now is not the worst uh, because we we want to pull this in so that they're all the same app running in the same way. So let's call it Seng Program for now um, and. Then we'll figure out how that actually comes in. Okay, so there is Seng program. Uh, start. Doesn't use these args, so we'll just do that. Oh yeah, no, exactly, Mr. Shoji. Uh, I, I do those kinds of things all the time. There's a word I'm going to type, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, I was I was talking with someone whose name is Tim recently, and every time I write time, so I'm just like, Tim, time. I'm like, no, 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 delete the E, delete the E. His name's Tim, not time. <laughs> Lots of those. Uh, okay, so what is this? Uh, abstract magic string names behind a variable set so that it's used for... Uh, uh, that's also used for image extraction. Oh, get face. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, so actually, so funny enough, I actually have one of those already. Although I don't include Young Cloud and Sephiroth, that we could include those because 
Uh, they are definitely needed for image display. Okay, so let's find out what's going. So if we do this, the only concern I've got is that we're going to spin up two of these uh, if we if if I just call start right now. which might not be the worst thing for the default version. Um, but I think in order to make this work, the best approach would be to uh, add a constructor to this <clears throat> instead of calling a um, public static void main uh, if we made that not static, they both have unique character ID values too. Uh, no, yeah, so that makes sense within the game data to have, like within the within the kernel to have uh, separate character IDs, uh, because within the data of the game they are a unique person. But in order for the game to include them in a party uh, and actually have them there that game data has to overwrite one of the existing nine characters. Uh, yes, exactly, uh, Simon. But what I want to do first is get the dependencies using the same values. So I want to get the DI container working and then separate it. So that's why I pulled it in here as a separate piece, uh, because this minimizes it. But I do need to make it not static so that we can include the dependencies. So what dependencies do we need? Right now we need the party status view model to be a thing. This returns back the status for what does it return it? It overwrites it each time. Ooh, that's interesting. Creating a new one instead of mapping onto a new one. Um, is this this is gonna throw it away each time? Um, oh, that's funny. <laughs> when you get an exception, you just do search for process. Because <laughs> you're figuring if you threw an exception, it was probably because the it it couldn't find the process anymore or something. That that makes sense. It's just funny. Okay. Um. Uh. Let's see. Uh, must be discovered before data can be loaded. Yes, of course. Um. Load data from kernel, start monitoring game, load game, pro locate game process, start monitoring the game. So this begins the timer, and that's timer elapsed, and so then you must be triggering this again. Uh, so every time the timer elapses, you trigger this. So that's your first one, and Okay, so you run it once immediately and then start it so that it so that it begins right away and then the the subsequent times it triggers uh, it will be um, running through that. So you just don't want to wait a half a second for the first execute. Okay, that makes sense. Alright. Uh, it overwrites because it was one point of it was your one point of truth. Uh, you can use the existing one in place of the new statement on it to overwrite an existing one. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, because we're going to pull it in. So it, it will work fine and we'll create it. Instead of instead of newing one up there, we're going to create it here. So um, we're just going to put this here and we're going to call it the party status view model. 
What a crazy name. Okay, so if we do that... This should be using the exact same one, so uh, we can just make it read-only for now. And then in here, instead of creating a new one, like this, uh, so let's change this so convert to assignment statements, because that'll make it a little bit easier. Because now I can just do that. Uh, oh, whoops. Oh no, because uh, we're not a, we're not overwriting it. Uh, this is static. There we go. So we're gonna have to make this whole program thing not be static, uh, so that it can take in dependencies this way. Uh, so this will be an instance of this. Um, so that pulls all that data. Uh, this extract status from map. Uh, yeah, that that sounds right. I mean, we might rename that to party status instead um, so grab the character put the character over that one we don't need to return anymore so let's take a look at the beginning of this um, so um, extract extract status uh, from map uh, so maybe um, update status from map um, we are extracting the data but I want to make sure that we're clear on the name that we have a side effect that we're actually doing that um, uh, what's that in interpolated string coloring this right here uh, oh okay I see what you're asking me huh I will explain uh, I can go back to read only as your uh, yeah I think I did yeah it's back to read only um, so uh, here, here's the here's the coloring. So, this is so th here's my string. Um, the the actual just text in the string. So notice the semi the uh, sorry the colons here. Uh, they match with the color of the actual like string quote here. Uh, these are local variables. So because time is a local variable, it just includes uh, the the local variable there. Uh, these are symbols that are irrelevant to the string itself, so they're just standard symbols, so they're using that white and gray color, respectively. Uh, in here, this is just the, you did a, a literal value, so uh, just a number literal, so that's the coloring for a number literal. Uh, and this here is the string format coloring, so that bright green is indicating the string format, uh, because essentially what we've said is, you know, take the time and divide by the amounts in order to get the different parts, uh, and then use that uh, for these pieces. So this is essentially, um, you know, figuring out from a big time uh, value that's in, in seconds, we're taking the number of seconds, dividing it into the hours, the minutes, and then the remaining seconds. So, yep, that's all it is. Uh, and we only want to display two digits for each one, so the idea being, like, if it came up with any anything, you know, weird, you know, like, just always display it as, as zero, zero. So, uh, if this came up as one, for example, don't display it as one, because we don't write time as, like, one colon one, you know, you'd do that as, like, you might do, like, one colon zero one, uh, but in this it's going to force it to be zero one colon zero one colon zero one, for example, at, like, one one one. Okay, as the quick explanation of what uh, was being done there. So, there's got to be complaints about uh, other calls to static methods or something in here. There we go. Oh, I did this without actually renaming it. Derp. My bad. Uh, we don't need to update this party status when we do it. We just need to call it. This is now going to complain because this uh, can't be static anymore. Um, this can't access that because that's static. Uh, this can't be accessed there because that was static. Uh, this one can't do it because this one is static. Maybe I should just replace static in here. I guess something might be able to be static. Like this might be able to because it's not referencing anything else. 
Uh, yes, exactly. Um, yes, the neon green. Uh, nope, uh, that is that is a VS default for a string format within that. So if it's a string format, it's going to be that color. Um, isn't there any .NET type that can do that conversion? Uh, yes, so Simon, there should be, actually. Uh, we should be able to do it as a, um, I mean... The, the thing is, Simon, I don't want to go fix that code. I don't want to go back and fix all the code right now, because, um... So, we could do it as a time span. Um... Um, which I'll call time span instead of time. I would love to call it time. So, map.live... Uh, total seconds, for example. Um, we just have to take this and say time span from seconds, and then that becomes a .NET type that includes time. Whoops, time span dot hours. So see. So yes, we can do that. We don't have to do the math ourselves. It's there is a built-in type that does it if we want to do that. Uh, and in fact, I'm betting that we could even just do a display from this uh, but again remember get it working first then 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 make changes so this is exactly what you said uh simon which is get it working first then then go make changes uh yep exactly uh that is a good point we should put it to do um use a time span here yeah, exactly. And it, it, it's one of those, like, yeah, that works fine. Um, yeah, I, th I think the idea is that uh, if Mr. Shoji didn't know that you could just use the time span thing, it, it works. Uh, make it work, then make it good, then uh, only if you need to make it fast. Correct, Robert Tables. That is that is a good way of doing things. Um, uh, do you dark theme? Maybe it's the dark theme. This is a VS default for me. Um... So, I don't know. Build. What do we got? All right. Uh, so it does build now. So awesome. Let's try and run it. So the one thing we're going to need to do, this view model, um, our uh, app time. So I have some code I need to extract out of mine, too, that we have not done yet. This, I don't want it living here. This is service registration. I don't want this in the app.xaml.cs uh, file. Uh, it needs to get called from here, but I don't want it to actually live here. Uh, so where did I wire our view models? Right here. Um, services dot and we, we want to keep one copy of this. So single copy of that. Only one because we do need to reference it and track the status across uh, this piece. Uh, and then the other thing that we need to do is spin up the Seng program. So, uh, in order to do that, let's add this maybe by chatbot, because that is our equivalent one-ish, sort of. Okay. Now, when I do this, it should automatically uh, make the reference to Seng for us, which it's going to live somewhere else eventually, but for now it's going to reference Seng. And so we'll have an instance of Seng available. And then where we start up our application, right here. So we start up the host there and data loader, workload coordinator. And before we actually show the main window, services, um, get service. And it's going to be a Seng program service. Uh, I, you know what? I'll make it a field. Um, just so that we make sure it doesn't get garbage collected or anything. Like, it shouldn't. But, like, just in case, we'll we'll make it a field so that it really, really sticks around. Uh, sing program start. Uh, hang on. Let me check out what's going on in chat. Um... Unless you use TypeScript, then it always works, uh, is always good and is always fast. Wow, the Michael Jolly. How much are they paying you to say that? Uh, is this 2019 preview? Uh, yes, it is, uh, Simon. So it could be the preview that's doing it. 
Uh, three hours of Clark House stream would say otherwise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, I was written before I got jumped, uh, being told I should make it public. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, Rambling Geek, welcome. Uh, and, uh, greetings, Entity Adam as well. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't need that right now. Okay. Um, so, let's find out what happens. Um, so, we need to modify our status page to check the correct location. So, we made a controller called our API controller, and we called it the party controller. The party controller. Uh, instead of API status, we're going to call API party. Uh, maybe I should have called it party status, but that's fine. Um, so receive pushes instead, so that's, that's okay. Do we call any other APIs? Um. Uh, no, those aren't going to... Uh, we're going to have the image stuff. That's our connection to the menu hub. That's... Is this the... Uh, that's actually a good point. I should look for Axios. No, so that's the only get, and it's pulling that data. So if this wires up correctly... Let me pull up the menu. All right, let's try it. Uh, so I may still end up with uh, broken images, because I don't have that data... Because uh, I don't think we've pulled it from uh, from Elena yet. Dark theme would be picking up saved settings against your VS login. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I am on I am on a dark theme. Uh, well, we didn't throw any exceptions, so in theory that means that some of it wired up at least. Cloud Tifa Barrett, nice. It loaded in our data. Awesome. In the Shinra building with two gil, that's our current time. So if we take a look here, let me get the timer on the screen. So see that, uh, uh, so the game only registers time changes while I'm in it. So that's why the time's not just ticking, uh, in case you're wondering why time wasn't ticking. Um, but if I'm over here, you can see time ticking on that one, and, uh, someone, let's use, um, let's use chat commands. So there it is, so that is actually, so this arguably now is saying, and it is getting these menu updates, and notice they transition at the same time, which is so cool. Um, I really think that is awesome. So... You can now just play this game, and the neat thing is, like, notice it has our uh, our character health. So um, that's that's the stuff that uh, that that Seng was built that uh, Seng has is all the all the party statusy stuff. So let me go ahead and um, well, what's Seng gonna do when I close this? I actually don't know how how well Seng handles that um, the application disappearing. Let me load up a different game because I messed with that one. Um, I'd already run our popper command. Okay, so here's here's our game. Oh, I no longer have it pulling the menu color. That's why it's not updating. Um, that was that was me that did that. Sorry. Okay, so we can change the menu color to that, or we can go to random. Um, Yeah, um, yeah. so the, the challenge is I right now don't... So I have Seng disabled in its reading of memory separately. It's now only receiving its memory from uh, Interactive 7, and the reason is that I didn't want it to do the two separate checks. Uh, so in the future, what I expect we'll do is we'll have Seng only check the menu color changes, like, every, like, you know, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 seconds or something like that. Like, because that, that will change so infrequently that if, if the user goes into the config menu and changes it, fine, yeah, we'll we'll notice that they did it a little while later. It's not a huge deal. Uh, but 
uh, if they change it through here we do want to have an update because then because chat is trying to adjust it so uh, it's just the in-game control we're gonna have have like not update immediately because while you're just playing the game that's not changing so like that only changes so rarely that that checking it constantly just seems like a waste so uh, when the WPF app exits, does it cleanly close all web runtime processes? Uh, so, Simon, the short answer is yeah, for the most part. Um, could there be a circumstance where it didn't? Uh, maybe, but and, but that is one of the things that we do need to be careful about, uh, especially as we get into actually making these WebSocket connections. So, uh, congratulations, Michael Jolly. You've now given us this lovely, like, cotton candy display of colors. So, if you don't like the circus, uh, th then, uh, you know, there you go, see? And it's really cool to watch it transition. So, the neat thing um, is that, uh, now you're not seeing this because I don't have the right images, but um, all of the, uh, but those are, are the, it's displaying the correct icons for everything. So, if I actually go look at the materia equipped by that, whoops. Uh, the materia equipped by the characters. Uh, you'll see that Cloud has four materia equipped, so does Tifa, and so does Barrett. So everybody has four. So that's why over here in, in this view, uh, when we're on the materia page, it is showing the four materia that they're equipped with. So it that that is what uh, we're bringing in. That is Mr. Shoji's thing. It's really awesome. So um, really, really cool stuff. Uh, whoops. There you go. Problem is the game does not update if we don't if it's not focused. So that's why you saw only the one change. Um, yeah, Robert Tables. This is the the uh, the. There are a lot of nice color palettes, and the the nice thing is there's also just random. And then uh, after we completed random, we go to oh, uh, Michael, you forgot to put menu first. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, uh, here you go, everyone. Watch. Uh, it, it, Please in, uh, whoops, uh, not random, rainbow. I know how to type. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's what we're building. So when you trigger rainbow, this is this is what it does. Um, and it just goes for a while. So uh, I think this is an effect that would look really cool just while you're playing. Uh, it actually does very well in the game. Uh, yeah, sadly, uh, Michael, um, that will only go to, well, first off, you only did three colors, but... Uh, <laughs> yes, Mr. Shoji. Robert Tables has a very good uh, name reference there. <laughs> L Little Bobby, we call him, actually. Call him Little Bobby Tables. So that is what we're, that is what we're building. If, when I end this, that'll stop the stop the effect. Where <laughs> wherever it was, we were. Okay, so um. So that's good stuff. So that does seem to wire together. So first thing I want to do is get us a commit of this because this is the most together that these two have ever been. So let's let's commit this, even though they're like we're not nearly done. Um, init uh, initial sing integration. So. Sang is now like in there. Uh, the main, the only thing we're really missing is those image files. Now I'm gonna add those just for a second and not commit them because uh, I just want to confirm that everything does work once we do that. And as long as they do, then we can say yeah, that's you know like good. Okay, so uh, the dub 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 root. Uh, let's just bring that over. So the image file should be over here now. And um, do I need to do anything with them? I think I... Okay, so because of the type of application we are, we have to specify that they're content and copy them over because of where the runtime location is. So that's one of the weird things about including an ASP.NET app inside of a WPF app is we do actually have to do this. Um, so the images are all right there. So these are all the images that we are not including, by the way. 
Uh, these are not getting committed. Uh, can I not do it that way? Can I do this? And, like, content copy if newer? And will that get all of them? Whoops. Okay, it looks like it did. Awesome. Uh, unpin. All right, let's try it. Let's see what happens. So it should build and copy those image files into the bin folder of the application, which means that those will be uh, sitting uh, in a folder right next to the. Uh, it'll be a, there'll be a www root folder uh, with our uh, WPF. Uh, are those images in, in the git ignore? Uh, no, Simon. I might git ignore them, but I'm just not going to commit them right now because I just want to do this as a as a test, just to confirm that our integration really is working right. Because uh, I have not tried it yet. Oh, wow. Oh, it already... Whoa, it just started working. That's so funny. <laughs> there it is. Uh, so that's actually what it's supposed to look like. Um, that's hilarious that it just wired together. Didn't didn't even need to do anything. Nice. Exactly. So I don't... Uh, well, uh, I so I don't want to commit them even once. I don't even want them in this repository. Because uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to worry about that at all. Uh, so, oh, uh, I have to refresh to get the slots backgrounds. Um, I might, uh, I'm, I might have messed with the CSS a little bit. So if I'm, if there's something wonky with the CSS, we haven't pulled that one again yet. Uh, so we will need to pull in your most recent CSS changes if you did something there. Uh, is that connected? Yes, it's connected. Okay, cool. So, uh, Mr. Shoji, that could be on my end. So this is what it's supposed to look like. So, uh, which is pretty darn cool. So the trick is we just need to make sure that that data that we're displaying up here, those images, are coming from the program instead of just being copied in. Because right now, I just copied them in there. But this is what it's supposed to look like. Uh, so you end up with this. Uh, displays runs while you're playing the game so that everyone can see all of that info. It's really cool. I I love what Mr. Shoji did with Seng. It is really neat. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and grab the CSS and we'll take a look at what's different and then try to make it work. Um, do you like this particular game? Is this something that drew you into the idea? Yes, so Robert Tables, this is one of my favorite games. Uh, and it's actually getting a remake uh, next year. Uh, but this is the original version. Uh, this. So I have played mass tons of this game. Uh, I would literally play this game for like 80 hour, you know, 80 hours in a row over a weekend, just playing through it as many times as we could, as fast as we as, as we could. You know, we'd be like, oh, we got a long weekend, cool. Like, you know, when when you get those like, um, I don't know if you remember uh, way back when uh, when you were in high in, in high school, like in the 50s or whatever, you probably had. Just kidding. Uh, we, you probably had like uh, uh, like long weekends and things. So when it, whenever we'd have like long weekends or something like that, or over the summer, uh, a friend of mine and I would actually just sit around and just play this because uh, um, yeah, it was a very very fun game. This or Final Fantasy VIII, actually. Ah, uh, the fifties. <laughs> well, well done, uh, uh, little little Bobby Tables. Little Bobby's not so little anymore. Uh, yeah, the, f the 50s, just like it was, yeah, just like it was yesterday. Yeah. Uh, halfway through extracting those as tasks in Atlanta. Yeah. Not very familiar with the project. How does the application listen uh, for commands? Oh, yeah. Uh, so there is actually a Twitch chat bot that is wired in as well, uh, James. Uh, so if you took a look at our application startup that we were looking at, uh, you would notice that we initialized a few things. There is... Um, this just loads in any data that we have saved from a previous time running it. Uh, this is uh, the thing that coordinates any time we have workloads that need to process in an or like in a specific order, like they, they need to be synchronized in some way. This does that. Uh, this is the saying that we just included. And if you take a look inside of our, did we, where did we start the chat bot? Where do I start that? Did I, did I include that in here? Maybe I did that in here. I wish I hadn't. If I did it in here, I'm going to move it out there because I wish I hadn't started it in here. Oh, no. It does start in here because I trigger it. Uh, yes, of course it does. So, um, 
Yeah, no, I'm being crazy. Of course it does. Uh, so let me show you. When you click this button right here, this connect button, we actually, that is actually where we initialize our chat bot. And that is just a separate, uh, you know, section of our code that connects to Twitch and it is listening for all chat uh, stuff. So it is actually checking every single command that is, every single message that is sent into Twitch chat. Every single one gets processed. 90% of them get thrown away uh, because none of you are cheering. So the only chat commands it listens to, or the only chat messages it listens to are either chat commands, which means you uh, prefix your message with an exclamation point, or if you included bits in, in the chat message, it does that as well. Uh, so for example, if you type in exclamation point gill, uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so Robert Tables, check your gill, check your gill balance. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the 100 biddies, by the way. Uh, but if you check your gill balance, you should have 100 gill. Uh, so Robert Tables, if you so that's where your 100 gill came from, is uh, the 100 bits. Uh, and do we have any subs in the chat right now? Most people haven't been talking. So uh, the Michael Jolly, uh, check your gill balance. The Michael Jolly's got, got gill, if he's still here somewhere, might be. Uh, but he might have might have might have wandered away from the keyboard, or might have gone to do something else. Uh, either way, yeah, that's uh, that's actually uh, the way that that works. If you check the settings, uh, so we said uh, that all subscribers get 150 just bits whenever you're running the program. So basically, any stream that you do, all your subscribers just automatically get 150 bits. And that is just like a nice, you know, thank you to anybody that subscribes to your stream. And then uh, anybody that, that uh, throws bits just gets additional. And so that's actually how, uh, like, if you made it so that menu colors, uh, like in order to change the menu colors, you might decide that costs 10 bits. You can, you know, if you want to, like, not have people just changing it all the time constantly while you play, you could say, no, hey, you know, you spend, you know, spend 50, you know, uh, essentially spend 50 cents, you can change my menu color is totally a thing um, that I can see people doing. Also, the hilarity, because we're checking for any message, you can actually see in our debugging output a whole bunch of stuff that happens. So quite funny. So yeah, that's uh, that's what we're setting up here. So I am not going to commit those images because that would be a terrible, terrible idea. Uh, because while it does work really well uh, and looks really cool, I don't want to deal with the ramifications of, uh, you know, an, an angry Squaresoft not uh, not being okay with that. So, there we go. And the nice part is, this is still here! Ha! Look, I can even refresh and it's still there. That's what I call victory right there. So, okay, cool. Let's go ahead and grab the current version of the site CSS because uh, Mr. Shoji assures me that I am missing some. And I am sure that Mr. Shoji is correct. Let's see, what are we missing? Um, that's just the default background color. Uh, whatever the change was must not have been in the CSS. Uh, oh, well, okay, that that's that's fair, uh, Mr. Shoji. We could use that one. Um, yeah, so this is the adjustment that uh, that I suggest that you could put this all in one background line. Now the funny thing is, I can't make this work in view in the binding. I think it's getting I think it's a problem with using multiple binding values. I'm not sure. So I had to separate it in mine. So that that's the challenge. When when binding with view, we ran into the problem, which I'm betting you did not run into, because uh, I don't remember if you had that bound the same way in view that I was using. Uh, so let's take a look. Yeah, see, you did it as one border, uh, but I'm betting then when you change the color, you didn't do it with a binding. I bet you're just setting it again, aren't you? Yeah, so you're just setting it again uh, when you receive the value. So 
I can do that, but then I don't get the binding on it. The challenge is this. Um, when I bind it uh, with multiple values, it d it's not okay with that. I'll show you what I mean. So if I go up here, so I actually have it bound to those right now. So I, I have the three layers all separately bound, but if I combine it and do that as a single property, it, it gets angry and doesn't work anymore. So I don't know. Oh, so you can still bind it as three. If you do the three separate ones, it still binds this way. Um, the um. So actually a good question. Maybe what we need to do is combine from the separate computeds or something? Hmm. Uh, earlier on you had two different bits on it. One had a new background statement every line, one didn't. Yeah, um, yes, earlier on I was in the in the different approach. So it, keep in mind I can also write it like this. I can do the binding directly in here and just say back, uh, say uh, background this and then match this way. So if I do it like this, this is also a valid way of writing this. Uh, whoops. I don't know why that didn't, uh, wire together nicely. So, I can do this as well, and then change these structures. And I can go down here and change this so it's no longer, you know, background, and I can make it just return back the string. like that and then turn back the string get rid of this you know what let me just nuke those and we'll wire these up like this because I do like this a lot better of like return back what the style is so there we go so then these become computed values based on, on those, and then they become styles that wire up here. And that should work uh, fine. Uh, so hang on, uh, what is this? So you need background, gradient, gradient, gradient. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so this, but, but this one works. Um, Yes, yes, it does, Mr. Shoji. You just saw it working. You saw, you saw it working. It was working right here. This is mine, not yours. <laughs> so yes, of course it works fine. Okay, so the images go away because I got because uh, I've rebuilt. So that's why those images all disappeared. Um, but then when I when I do this, because uh, we are connected, I can just say this and actually, what did that? Wait, hang on. This was working a minute ago. Why is this not working right now? Hang on, I messed up something. Uh, dot left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. Okay, <clears throat> that's one of each, that's fine. Um, oh, you know what I should have done? Looked here and just did this. What? What's breaking? Oh, I closed the app, dang it. All right, hang on. Restart the app. Bring it over here, open that. Let's bring up the game. Let's bring up this one. 
Okay, so it's complaining that it can't find the images. That's fine. Oh, CSS images. Uh, yeah, it's not in. Definitely not in there. Uh, what was I gonna do? Yes, this. Huh. Well, that worked earlier. So I wonder what I, what did I, what did I put, oh, whoops, nope, did not mean to click that. Stop, stop, Visual Studio, stop. Thank you. Uh, background, background, did I leave the background on these? No, return, linear gradient, radio, radio, radial gradient. Um, it's like these aren't updating when I update that. Can I do something weird? I didn't do anything weird, did I? Is actually no. Yep. Color active color font size font size yeah. No, that's that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm declaring just a regular JavaScript object inside of here, and it has these values, and these are references to that. And background should be that. Does background need to be inside or outside of the braces in this instance? Inside, it's that's exactly where it goes. It needs to be inside like that. Uh, so the trick is that uh, this is actually just a JavaScript object. So if you actually just think of this as a JavaScript object, that's all it is. Um, uh, it'd be the same thing if I bound it outside of there as well. Because you can, yeah, so you can bind direct to a an object like this, and then that's just an object. And then that's the exact same thing. Why is that now? So the binding looks right. Well, I messed something up. Anyway. Uh, yes, I, I don't play a horse sound when, uh, when, when JavaScript is mentioned, because I'm not weird. Is that is that something you do on your channel? Uh, is it like the uh, is like right out of Young Frankenstein? You know the like uh, you mentioned the thing and like you just hear the horses in the distance. You know like that. Is is that the is that the sound effect you do, Robert Tables? Is that what it is? Uh, it's a Fritz thing. Uh, oh, okay. Um, um, hang on. Uh, young. Uh, young F Frankenstein, uh, horse sound. Oh, oh my God, that is hilarious. The horse in Young Frankenstein reacts violently. Uh. Because it means glue? Uh... Hmm? 
No, that's not what it is. I have no idea what it is. Huh. Anyway, I'll look it up later. Uh, let's see. Uh, horses were, are still used to make glue. Yeah, but that's apparently not what the joke is about, Desert Griffin. Uh, it's apparently something else, but I don't know. I'm not going to read a whole thing just to find out what that joke was. But either way, uh, one of the characters in that uh, in that movie, whenever her name is mentioned, uh, you just hear horses in the distance. You know, like you hear, you know, like scared horse sounds, uh, which I'm wondering if maybe that's what, uh, what Fritz is alluding to with that. He's making a young Frankenstein uh, reference, almost. Uh, this is running, right? Yes, connected. And this is refreshed. Uh, what? Why is it not? What? We're back to the code that worked. Why is it not working? What did we do? What did we do? Um, let's go to the hub. Wait, why can't I drop a breakpoint here? Oh, cause that that's not code, right? Derp, herp a derp, herp a derp a derp a derp, herp a derp. Uh, menu hub emitter. This is the one that we wanted. We want the breakpoint there. Okay, so we're definitely calling this. Uh, cool confirmed let's go to the next spot that there could be an issue let's hop down here bring up the debugger and um, no because that's gonna have that refresh get out of here let's close that uh, scroll down to connection on color changed right here Uh, interesting. Is this the problem? Did that actually, did that actually go? We're not catching that breakpoint. Unless I need to be in there. Maybe I need to be in there. Hang on. Okay, we are. Okay. Uh, so there's our color values. Right there. So that's the color we're changing to first, is that one. Uh, and we're going to assign those into into these, which means that top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right are changing. Okay. So that should mean that we run these. When we do that, but we're not. So these these computed styles are not getting called. Why are they not getting called? They're right there. Totally getting used in those spots. This worked like just a little bit ago. What the heck's the problem? Why did you stop binding? Uh, it's the only thing I can think about is that in some way messing with it. Oh, uh, no, because we didn't we didn't change that code, so it should be fine. We're back to the normal code. Um, but 
back to green, that's good. Because uh, that means we no longer have the other code in there that was changing it. So, if we have this, then... Um, oh! Oh! I think I know what the problem was. I think it was that CSS that we had in there, actually, now that I think about it. Um, let's connect i7 to this. There it goes. It was that. That's hilarious. It was the CSS file the whole time. Our CSS file was, was killing it. So uh, we need to not have that. It, was there an extra layer or something? Yes. So I think it might have been the border layer that was adding it. Because the border layer was adding in the background. Uh, so that might have been what was killing it. So essentially the border was over top of ours. So the change I think might have been happening, but we weren't seeing it, I'm not sure. Something like that. But yay, that works. Okay, so, woohoo. <clears throat> so we don't need that. Um. think there's anything in there that we need to do right now um, what is is there anything left that needs to get pulled out of here no we don't need to do that um, oh we were gonna pull the Seng icon potentially um, yeah I guess the question uh, actually let's let's wait and uh, get a, a new one <clears throat> Anything else? No, I think that's good. Let's start. Uh, let's start um, changing some things then. Let's start bringing it closer together. So let let's see what we can do with this code to make them all be the same stuff. <clears throat> uh, so for now, these I think we'll keep separate until we can actually find a way to bring them all really, really together. Um, let's have a look in our app xaml.cs uh, so first off I wanted to extract our uh, dependency in um, let's say register dependencies uh, dependency registrar <laughs> That's not on my end, is it? Uh, nope, I'm not dropping frames or anything. Um, okay, so, yes, and I'm well aware that the earlier part was definitely less interesting for you, because uh, you'd already done some of that. <laughs> it's like, no, this was just moving stuff. Okay, so we need configure services to have what called this. Uh, that got called from there, so... This could totally be just static, can't it? Uh, static dependency registrar, so public static. Uh, what's it? Re yeah, okay. You know what? And bring all the types with them, please. Okay, there we go. Public, static, void, configure services, accepts an iService collection, runs this, great. It has a whole bunch of dependencies on it. This doesn't need to, so now we can say, uh, oops, not that one. This one. This code can all leave this. It does not need to be here. And this becomes, uh, 
dependency registrar dot configure services and that should let us do this boom so much nicer so now uh this uh little app.xaml.cs which is our startup project should now be so much simpler because we pulled all the dependency registration out which means the big mass of um using statements is not there um <laughs> Okay, so that's pulled out. Uh, let's let's say um, extract dependency registration. So I wanted to pull that because my my code needed that. Um, just straight up, uh, it was getting kind of nasty in there. So now app startup looks simpler. This really is just about how do we start up the application, uh, and we spin up a sing program and s start the thing. Uh, so that actually works pretty well. Let's see if we can't get a little bit of shared use out of some of these pieces where we have duplicates also. Um, so what are our duplicates right now? Um, we have the same... Uh, so native memory reader is not... Is, is, and so ours are not at all the same right now. Um, but I'm betting since this one seems larger than mine that uh, you needed something that I didn't need. Uh, uh, oh, that's funny. Uh, yours takes in the process in the constructor. I think in mine I created in there. Basically the same thing. I have a feeling you're using a um, a read. Uh, let's look at the top. Process VM read. Yeah, I I can't get away with read. I have to write. <laughs> trying to figure out what, uh, what uh, error view model, what do we use this for? Oh, this is for the for the error page. I didn't pull the error page over. Um, I guess I guess we can pull in the error page. Um, I hadn't actually pulled it. So let's do that real fast. So sang views uh, views Shared. I don't have a shared layout because I didn't think they really needed them to be honest. So I didn't use it because we're not really building a web app. So like the concept of you know continuity between pages doesn't really exist. About all we'd get from that is like sharing like which libraries they reference for which stuff. But I'm not even sure how much of that's gonna map. So. So web views shared error.cshtml. So then that's referencing an error view model, which will move the view model then from here over into our view models. Whoops. Oh yeah, that would want to rename it. ReSharp is going to complain about those. Unless I tell it that uh, FF7 is an acceptable name for things. Uh, 
Oh, moved it and it referenced that, and so then we put it in here so it was no longer uh, saying models being referenced. Okay, that's fine. Um, yep, that's the that's the one right there. Then I'll get rid of that. Uh, sounds good. If you're not really using it, then it's going away. Goodbye. Uh, let's see, uh, we'll remove the error view model then, that simplifies, whoops, uh, we don't need the folder for it either then. Yeah, so Mr. Shoji, I, I agree. We do need we do need something shared between them. Uh, it's just what that is. Um, that could just be a shared JavaScript file, for example. Um, and uh, it could be a basic thing like um, including uh, uh, the connection to um, the signal R to do the uh, menu color updates. Uh, actually, do we? What changes do we have right now? Um, oops. Move empty folder. Sorry about the commit for that. Let's do a. Let's do a quick one of these. Um, we're gonna make our our coding style match real fast because Visual Studio should just do like. Uh, at least some of that stuff, so it should fix up usings and and uh, so it should remove all the excess usings and remove like empty white space and things like that. So this should have adjusted white space and usings. So there's uh, a using adjustment. Oh, it's in one of mine. Yep. And then oh, you might want that skipped. So I'll take a look at what that looked like. So there's an extra one that we weren't using there. There's one of mine where they needed reordering. And some white space just sitting there. This should have... Did I get... Okay, good. I was going to say, like, maybe I didn't get all your usings. Maybe I did get them all, I mean. So there's some white space adjustments. It just searches the project and just finds all those. Uh, so this is the questionable one. Um, is this mine or yours? That's Seng Models. That's yours. Um, so you had these all lined up that way. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Yeah, so you lined them up so that you could read them like that, uh, because you put them all in as um, um, hex literals <clears throat> for those. One, two, four, eight, uh, which is funny because I almost feel like if I were going to write these, uh, I would uh, write them in binary literals almost. Because I think it might be clearer in binary literals than it is in uh, hex literals. Whoops. Because then you see what it's actually doing. Right? Because that's kind of how, it, like, what it's actually doing then. Uh, which point, if you were doing that, you'd want to do like this. Like, you'd want to make sure they were all prefixed with the right number of zeros to line up correctly.
So something along these lines. Because then you kind of see the, the structure that it makes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just funny because like this is kind of what we're doing. But yes, uh, the problem is once you get into the, the really big numbers uh, down to here, because uh, if we convert this one, <laughs> it's that long. <laughs> so... Yeah, I think I just put mine in as their actual numbers. And the documentation is also all in hex. Yep, very well could be. Uh, I don't think I did mine that way. I think I did mine as literals. I think I did mine as the uh, as the int values. Yep, mine are the int values. So, which you know I can read as those, but yeah, I could do the same thing, and uh, convert it to binary, and it is that, or convert it to hex. And it's that. So then that should match your darkness. Yep, it does. Yep, and I didn't go all the way to the end with that either. Uh, these are the only effects that we actually uh, do anything with. Um, so, uh, I'm... So I'm thinking then that we just grab your status effects and use that instead of mine, because I think yours in, uh, includes all of them, whereas mine does not. So they're both enum. Um, I, I did effects, you did effect. Uh, so same basic thing. So let's do it. We'll pull this one. Put it in this location with your name and not my name for it. So rename the file to match the type. Um, this one will go away. Uh, whoops. And let's see what's using this that needs to get switched. Oh, I guess it's every reference to it needs to get fixed, now that I think about it. Because we changed it off of my name, too, and I didn't do a rename for it. But, luckily, it's a quick change. Why is this one complaining? Oh, because I need to rename. Yeah, okay. Derp. It's like, what's this one's complaint? Oh, yeah. Because I didn't do a rename, because I was silly. <laughs> yeah, you do a bit converter of that. Uh, I I have learned 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 my lesson on some of those. There are a couple of those bit converters that don't uh, that will not convert correctly. Um, that we ran into some problems with. Uh, they work for some stuff, but not for everything. Um, they work as long as uh, um, you don't run into a situation where seven did something as. Um, um, where it did not do a, a full byte when it split up the memory, that's when we ran into problems. Oh, son of a gun. Here's what we're going to do. Status effects. Going to rename to status effects. Nope, we're not going to rename those symbols. Not rename related symbols, please. Okay, so this is now status effects. Let's compile, and it should compile. Uh, yes, it does. Quit smoking stuff. Works just fine. Oh, I called mine paralyzed. What'd you call yours? Paralyzed. That's fine.
There we go. Okay. Do 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 do. So one of yours, it, it didn't figure out was this. Oh, maybe we didn't have the import. Uh, maybe because I didn't fix this one first, it didn't get the rename of it. Okay, so now that that's changed, let's. Um, they should all line up now, and it should basically be just a. And you know what? Before we do that, let me do a quick uh, cleanup just to get all the namespaces right. There we go. Okay, so this one switched to using status effects and uh, other than that, it's just basic changes. So move that in there. Okay, so um, use uh, sing status effects code cleanup. Okay, so that is in there. <clears throat> Don't need to worry about those right now. So we're now using only one. So we, we now share that code, so that's good. Uh, what is next? Is there anything else that we can just easily get a nice win out of? Yeah, so... Um, this is like a, an accessory, that's, that's like a, a, an accessory view model almost. What do you use the ID and the name for? This is what you pull it as, and then do you use it for anything else? Just for the, just for the lookup, accessory database, pull it based on, on the ID, matching the, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so yours is going to be that one, um. Yeah, names displayed, the ID is that. Almost makes me wonder if we shouldn't simplify the... Um, um, does make me wonder if we should not simplify the... Uh, um, the view model. That's the word I'm going for. So, like, the view model doesn't have those. So, status view model... Because it had, or I should say, the character on this, uh, unless unless the character used something else. So, my thought being, if weapon, armlet, accessory. So, if accessory, we're just using the name. What and on weapon? Because uh, it's got link slots, growth. Because yeah, it's got a bunch of different stuff on there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is if we just make it a string on the character, that makes it a lot easier. Um, for for some of these. Yeah, weapon and armor has a lot more things on it. Um, so what I want to distinguish here, here's what I'm trying to go for. Um, that the so the way that i7 uses weapon, armor, and accessory is different from uh, the way that Sang does. So, um, but there's a lot of overlap. So the thought is. Um, Items and weapons and things like that, they are, um, how to, how to, how to come up with a phrasing for this. So the, within Seng, it, a, a piece of equipment is how it's equipped to the character and never, uh, is, is it treated as its item, uh, existence. So, uh, if you unequip an item in this game, uh, so if I go and... Let's make sure we can see it. And I go to the equipment for cloud. Oh, whoops. Status. Equipment for cloud. And I change his mithril armlet to a bronze bangle, for example. I can go into the item menu and I can find that mithril armlet. It's right here. So that's the mithril armlet treated as an item. Um, so if I equip that. 
and look back in the items, <coughs> you'll see the mithril armlet is gone, but there's now an iron bangle there instead. So... That's the idea, is that um, it's not uh, it's not a perfect uh, like analogy, because in, in saying it's only ever, it's the equipment's only ever equipment. Uh, in I7, I have, I have to add a lot of extra complexity to it, because weapon and armor need to have that. So m what I'm trying to come up with is where that overlap is going to be. Um, and so it almost, uh, like, I, I, I wonder whether or not, uh, like, whether it's overkill to pull in the the i7 one, because uh, essentially all I'm... So I don't have linked slots, growth, I don't have these in here. Um, like, specifically this data, if we tack this on to ours and sort of merge them together and just add this, then we end up with all, with all those aspects in there. And then we just have to make sure that when we pull the data, we pull it with these values as well. Uh, and then we can do the same thing. Because uh, in mine, uh, the weapon, for example, from i7, we have a bunch of extra stuff. So I combined them so that they are um, an actual like equipment thing. They, uh, I do all the lookups based on, on this. So I have that concept built into uh, the objects themselves uh, as, as static. So it's on, it's on the class type, but not really there. Um, and then we check to see, hey, is this a match based on this? Because we sometimes have to match by equipment ID or by item ID. And so that's why we have multiple IDs for how we look things up. Uh, because they could exist in either aspect. But if we can make it so Sing does that same check, uh, but based on equipment ID every time, then it could work pretty well. So if we adjust the value here, so if... Um, so it's kind of like saying, go to the weapon database and then find the first one where, you know, w dot is, you know, um, you know, get by something ID on, you know, is matched by something ID, then that would be a way to do it. So the weapon database, armlet database, and accessory database are, looks like just lists. So, yeah, so we could adjust to do the same thing. So... By that I mean we can make Seng use uh, the, the classes that we have. So we've got, um, essentially we built the database into the class for accessory and armlet and weapon, and materia for that matter. So they are not separate things. Uh, so then all we would have to do, uh, oh is this not getting used at all anymore? I don't think that gets used at all anymore. Yeah, because I put it there instead. That's funny, these don't need to be static anymore, do they? They could technically no longer be static. Because we're going to have a single instance of the Sing program, regardless. Uh, so, yeah, these just need to become static now, uh, no longer static as well. So that uh, is no longer static. It's just running as an instance of this. Um, don't you also use IDs based on character as well as equipment, or do you use an absolute equipment ID as well? Uh, so for the, uh, so Mr. Shoji, uh, what I have is I have an ID that we use in I7, and that is zero through Mac, through whatever the top number is. Uh, yes. Barrett, yes. So for the ID weapon, zero for Barrett is zero. But his equipment ID for his zero weapon is 17. Right? Does that make sense? So the equipment ID, if, if you just always used equipment ID, it would always match, is the idea. So your system just uses what my system calls equipment ID. But ID is the one that I let the, that users in the chat specify, so they don't need to know where Barrett starts. So if you always want to put someone to their their bottom item, it's just zero. Um, sort of. Except I don't pre-filter the list to those, but you can think of it that way. You can think of it that way if you want. Um. 
So we, we can filter all the lists into set. We can pre filter all the lists into separate groups if you like. Um, and that, that works just fine. Um, I technically have them also in one giant list. So that is all possible items. Uh, and then there is a filtered list that is just references to them. Because remember, these are all. Uh, they're just on the heap somewhere, each object for these, and so we just have references to them. So it is the same reference whether it came from a list of items or came from a list of weapons or came from a list of Barrett's weapons for that matter. So that would be the idea. Uh, and instead of being just an index to that location, um, so because it's not a, it's not an indexed uh, value, so that's not the like ordering that they are in that collection, though I guess they could be. Um, yeah, I guess they could be. Wouldn't really matter. Uh, so you could access it that way, but we don't separate it out that way. Um, I think we did at one point. See, mods and multi-character weapons working with your side. Yeah, so we just need to know the ordering. So we can. So the idea is that we can actually calculate them. So if we know what their item ID is, we calculate everything. We can calculate anything else based on that. Um, we would just need to know where it is. But yes, you are correct. We do need to figure out how to handle all the various. Uh, ways that mods do it. So um, again, as long as as long as we can pull all the data using Elena, we should be fine. So that's that's the key. We need Elena to make sure that we can pull the data, and then we just need to to reference it that way. Because in theory, in Elena, we should have um, yes, exactly. We should have both the item ID and the equipment ID. As long as we have those two values, we could we can figure out whatever else we want. So, um, and if, if we can then know which characters can equip them, then, then we can do that as well. Um, so either way, let's, uh, why don't, why don't we delay doing that full integration just yet? Uh, so this is like unstaticking. Um, so removing, uh, moving static, uh, static, uh, static. Keyword. Okay, so first thing that I need to do uh, is I need to that there are two different lists in the kernel, so two different lists in Elena. Yes, uh, as long as we can match them up by ID, though, we should be fine. Uh, I assume that there's that they're like even if it's based, even if we're matching it by by name or something like that, because they're the same. Uh, then that would be fine too. Uh, as long as there's some way that we can combine them and know that they're the same data. Uh, so first thing that I need to make sure that I do is hop over into here and uh, I am on a branch right now. Um, I need to add Mr. Shoji as, uh, so Mr. Shoji, I am going to actually just uh, bring you into this repository as another collaborator so that we don't have to do like forking and, and other stuff like that. I mean, I guess we can if you want, but that seems like it'd get a little bit messy. Um, we should probably not work on the same branch at the same time, but uh, working in the same repository should be okay. Uh, hang on. It'll be named. The kernel doesn't actually have any overlapping IDs in the file at all. That is hilarious, Mr. Soji. But yeah, it should work. That's why I'm like, this should work even if it doesn't line up perfectly. Um, add a collaborator. Uh, Shoji. Yep, that's the one. Yeah, so we are we are working in this one. So just branch off of the branch, and we'll we'll merge into this one. Uh, I called it web overlay for now, but you know that is obviously saying. Uh, so branch name doesn't matter, but we'll figure out how to get that working. So this 
in theory, this code should then uh, work. You should be able to pull it and try it. Um, if you and uh, we need to figure out how to start merging that together. Uh, like you, your comments about like, yeah, my code's not in great shape. Yeah, mine's not either because a lot of it's just cobbled together. But uh, I think together we can do some some fixing up uh, of lots of stuff. So, um, yeah. Either way, um, let me go ahead and click a few buttons here uh, on on some stuff. So, um, first off, I want to thank everybody for hanging out today. Um, I am going to start wrapping up our stream. Don't go anywhere, though, because I just want to run a few credits and everything like that and chat with you for a second, tell you about future things that are going on. Um, so the first thing I want to mention is uh, that uh, we want to thank all of these wonderful people who uh, helped us out today. So uh, we want to thank Robert Tables for cheering. Uh, we want to thank Brendonius for moderating today. Uh, we had a couple of awesome followers, so thank you to everyone uh, that, uh, you know, hung out, chat, uh, anything like that. Uh, Mr. HD Penguin, thank you also for that follow. And uh, anybody else out there, uh, thank you for hanging out with us, even if you didn't uh, speak up at all. Uh, I accidentally unfollowed because I mass unfollowed everyone, and I'm glad you refollowed. Uh, I'm glad you refollowed too. So welcome, welcome back to the uh, Dev Chatter uh, uh, streams. So, a couple of things that I do want to mention. So, if you have been watching our YouTube channel, you probably noticed that uh, the past two Saturdays I did uh, release Dev Chatter Basics video. If you haven't seen our Dev Chatter Basics series, uh, I am doing some videos where we are covering the basics, uh, like some basic concepts in C Sharp. So, absolutely, people that are uh, interested in, in you know, uh, either reaffirming their foundation in C Sharp or you're just jumping in, and you want to learn some of these things check out our YouTube channel. You can find a link in the chatter down below. And that will tell you about Dev Chatter Basics. Uh, there was no video today. I apologize about that one. The interfaces video is taking me longer than I expected. So uh, I'll either, you know, launch that one before next week or it'll just get delayed until next Saturday. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes. Uh, interfaces are a fairly complicated topic and I want to make sure that I cover it well like not going too crazy into things but you know getting people an idea of how you should use them and that sort of thing not just like what they are because uh, what they are is not that difficult to explain uh, but then like you know the ways in which you use them is kind of important to understand as well so uh, hopefully people enjoy that one uh, other concepts we're going to be talking about are um, you know application structure things I know people have questions about uh, we're obviously going to dive into concepts like lambda expressions uh, in, in C sharp uh, we're going to talk about you know just various other pieces of it um, so should be fun uh, dev chatter basics uh, let me know if uh, if you do have any questions ideas suggestions for future episodes of that or future streams as well and uh, we will be back uh, on hopefully Monday for Monday we're gonna Yeah, Monday stream might be late, but we should be able to do our Monday stream. Uh, so I will see everyone on Monday, uh, and uh, the stream time should be, if you look at your clock right now, subtract two hours. Roughly speaking, that's about our start time on Monday, but as I said, we'll be a little bit late. So thank you everyone for hanging out. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy coding, and uh, yeah, later.